Good morning and welcome to Arohi's Idea Exchange webinar. Today we're going to be discussing a project that was conducted by the UC Council of Retiree Associations or CUCRA. This was a survey that was conducted of UC retirees that asked about their volunteer service, their professional engagement, their employment in retirement, and their awards and recognition. Their survey was sent to approximately 16,800 retired staff and academic appointees, such as lecturers, librarians, researchers, and co-op specialists. I will mention that the survey did not include Emeriti because the Council of UC Emeriti Associations conducts its own survey of Emeriti every three years and has been doing so for many years. This survey project was the first all-inclusive survey of staff and other academics for the all of the nine UC campuses plus the three uh, national laboratories that UC oversees. We had about a 27% response rate for 4,478 respondents to the survey. Now, uh, UC has a total of approximately 70,000 retirees system-wide, but because of privacy concerns, the UC would not share email addresses with us. So we had to use the survey um, population as only those retirees who had previously shared their email addresses with their UC retiree association or retiree center. We understand that this creates an inherent bias uh, with the survey, and uh, so we cannot randomize these results to UC population as a whole. So I just wanted to mention that from the beginning. So before I talk about this project, let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Sue Barnes, and I am a recent UC retiree, retiring in 2019. And I worked at UC Davis for approximately 22 years. For the last seven years, I was the director of the UC Retiree Center, UC Davis Retiree Center. For the last three years of my career, I went to UCLA and I was the director of the Emeriti and Retirees Relations Center at UCLA. In addition, I have been involved with approximately the last 10 years as uh, various capacities on the board, including a past president. And I am currently serving as Arohi's interim executive director. In addition, I was on the committee that oversaw this survey project and I wrote the first draft of the survey report and then worked with the committee very closely to finalize the report. So I'm very familiar with this project from the inside. So for today's webinar, um, I'm going to talk first just a little bit about Arohi. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, Arohi is a dynamic member network. We include retirement associations, retiree centers, emeriti centers, and campus offices that support all phases of retirement, including human resources, academic affairs, advancement development, and as well as individual academic retirees. We provide resources and connections to enhance retirees' significant achievements and contributions to their campuses, communities, and professions. And we hope that those of you who are Arohi members take advantage of the resources we provide because we're all working in this together and we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We can help one another create the best programs for our retirees. So today's webinar, we're going to be talking about several things. Um, start with first talking about the goals that we had for the survey, then the major survey findings. I'm just going to do a quick overview of that. We're going to then talk about the project scope and the process, and we're going to talk about positive outcomes and lessons learned because we hope that this webinar will help other campuses who want to do similar kinds of projects. You are welcome to use any of the materials that we will uh, give you the link for at the end of the seminar, including the questionnaire, uh, any of our templates for press releases, etc. So again, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can adapt any of these materials as you see fit. We just ask that you please uh, recognize that you received assistance from Arohi and from the UC uh, project. So to start with what the goals were for the survey, um, the, we've set primary, four primary goals. 
And the number one goal and the most important goal in our minds was to help UC administrators better understand retiree contributions. One of the reasons we felt this was important is that of the 10 UC campuses, there was a, a very large discrepancy in terms of how much support the campuses provided to their retiree associations. Some campuses have fully staffed and professionally staffed retiree centers, while other campuses had very little funding or support from their campus administrators. So we wanted to use this survey to help administrators better understand retiree contributions. We wanted to help our retirement organizations advocate for their retirees for the benefits and privileges that they've worked so hard for. We wanted to give retirees themselves information about their achievements in the hopes that retirees, if they knew what their other uh, colleagues were doing in retirement, it might give them some incentive to start contributing more both in their communities and their campuses and to really realize the collective voice that they could have. And lastly, to help our retirement organizations create and improve retiree programs. So throughout the survey project, we kept returning to these goals. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as the webinar goes along. The importance of staying with your goals um, throughout the project to help define what you want your survey and your survey report to accomplish. So let's look at some of the uh, findings from the report and from the survey. So the most striking finding is the extent to which respondents remain committed to UC's mission of public service. As you can see by this graphic, 63% of respondents volunteer in their communities and 20% reported volunteering for UC. This is very striking um, because compared to a more general survey that was conducted by the US Bureau of Statistics, in 2015, it was, it was a study of all, all adults age 55 and older. Only 25% of adults age 55 and to 64 volunteered in their communities in any capacity, and only 24% of those age 65 and older reported volunteering in, their, in any capacity. So again, while we know that the way we conducted this survey, we have an inherent bias toward retirees who are more active because those that shared their email with their retiree association tend to be those that are more involved. At the same time, this is a very striking finding um, that shows how involved and how engaged UC retirees are. And while they're out there in the community, they're advocating for UC in a variety of ways and becoming a voice for the institution. Another important finding was uh, the impact that our retiree associations have on retiree volunteer service. So we were able to filter down the results of the survey because we asked where people lived and we asked if they were members of their association or not. So then we could filter the results down to members who lived within 30 miles of a UC campus and non-members who lived within 30 miles of a UC campus. And you can see more than twice as many of our retirees who are members of their association volunteered for UC and a higher percentage volunteered outside of UC as those who were non-members. One of the things the survey also pointed out though is that the disparity between the number of retirees volunteering in their communities and the number of retirees volunteering at UC showed that most UC locations could probably do more to capitalize on the service capacity of their retired population. The survey did not ask why uh, retirees don't volunteer on their campus. However, several mentioned in the comments and there were some common reasons. They often mentioned that there was difficulty parking and there was too high of a cost to park on campus. They, didn't, they weren't made to feel welcome when they came to the campus. Um, they weren't made to feel a part of the campus community. And in some cases, they didn't feel the campus was very accessible to them. Uh, if they had some mobility limitations. So we shared this information with our individual campuses so that they were aware of this issue and if they want to increase volunteerism on campus could start to address some of these issues. The other thing that the survey report did was really play up uh, the vital role that our retiree associations and retirement centers play in engaging retirees. On several of our campuses, our retiree associations offer scholarships 
Some offer scholarships to students and some offer scholarships to staff that are pursuing their educations. Some focus on veterans, on retiree grandchildren, or on returning students. Almost all of our associations work with an office on campus to actually uh, implement the issuing of the scholarships, be it the foundation or the uh, the scholarship office on campus, the financial aid office, staff development, depending on the type of scholarship they have. So the, most of our associations have important partnerships on their campuses to offer these scholarships. Retiree associations also facilitate uh, volunteerism at a variety of UC events, be it convocation, uh, large campus open houses at UCLA, it's Bruin Day, at Davis, it's Picnic Day, um, Move-In Day, Retirees help giving directions to new students and their parents at UC Davis. Um, retirees have been volunteers at the new parent receptions, helping to serve wine, to serve uh, olive oil, and to just interact with the parents. And the parents love hearing from people who have a long history with the campus. It makes them feel more comfortable with dropping their students off. The associations also facilitate a variety of volunteer opportunities in partnership with many different campus um, departments. Uh, and they may be docents at museums or at arboretums or botanical gardens. They may be uh, application readers for new student applications. They may be tour guides for visiting scholars. Um, they may be mentors for international students, etc. And then speaking of mentoring, there's a variety of formal and informal mentoring programs that our retiree associations are involved with, possibly with junior, uh, junior staff, many mentoring programs with students, including first generation students, former foster youth, international students. And one thing I recommend for those associations who wish to establish a mentoring program is that mentoring programs are very um, staff dependent and you really need a paid staff person in most cases to keep a mentoring program going. So I recommend to associations that instead of starting a program on your own that you partner with existing programs that are already happening on campus. For example with first generation students or with former foster youth or with your international students office. There are many programs already going on that you can just tap into and help to recruit volunteers for and create partnerships to really use your resources widely. The next finding that was important in our minds was the level of professional engagement that retirees still have. So you can see by this graphic, 27% provided one or more professional services. And the most common that were mentioned were as consultants, service on board of directors, publications editors, and service on professional committees. And 15% published one or more written works, the most common being journal articles, followed our papers for conferences, books, and book chapters. We, uh, as part of this survey I mentioned, we did not include Emeriti because the UC Emeriti conduct their own separate survey. But we did include academic appointees that are not Emeriti, which would include assistant professors, adjunct professors, researchers, librarians, um, and co-op specialists. So we were able to filter out their results and among those respondents with academic appointees, this number was much higher. 42% provided professional services and 33% published one or more written works. This is not surprising given the fact that um, for most of them they were just continuing their professional interests into retirement from their careers. And as I mentioned earlier, um, these types of statistics are important because when retirees are out in the community, they really are serving as advocates and ambassadors for the university in many ways. In terms of employment, what we found was a large percentage of our retirees continue to work in one form or another. Now, most of them reported working part-time, not full-time. And most of them returned to work not for financial reasons, although some, it was a financial concern. But for most, they returned to work to continue their social connections, their mental stimulation, and a sense of purpose. And you can see by this graphic that 16% work outside of UC, 12% returned to work at UC, and 15% were self-employed. Now, I will mention that UC does allow its retirees to return to work, but only on a limited basis. Retirees can return to work 
for more, no more than 43% of their original salary at retirement, and they can return to positions for no more than a year at a time. So these are short-term, limited-time, part-time opportunities. Um, but retirees within those limitations are well-suited to so many tasks that you see, and they're used for things like training new staff, filling positions on an interim basis, um, filling positions for family leave, evaluating admissions applications, assisting during seasonally busy times, such as the beginning of the quarter, and helping with short-term projects. They're a very important uh, labor pool for our university. And in terms of financial contributions, which I think is one of the most important outcomes of the survey, but one of the things that we did not realize was going to be so difficult to find. So when we designed our survey questionnaire, we did not include a question about financial contributions. We didn't ask people how much they contributed to the university. One, because we thought they would turn people off. We didn't want them to think this survey was being done just because we wanted them to give money to the university. And two, because we knew that the numbers would not be very accurate. So what we thought was that we were going to be able to go to our advancement and development office and get the actual numbers. And then we were going to include that information in our survey report. What we found as a result of this project is that most UC locations do not track retired staff donations, although they do for a Meritai. So we were not able to get that information from most campuses. We did get some partial information. Um, so as you can see, UC Santa Cruz for the three year period of the survey, retirees contributed 13.3 million. San, UC San Francisco, 600,000. UC Irvine, 11 million. And UC Davis, 6 million. Again, these are partial totals. But what we realized as a result of this survey is that our retiree associations could now go back to their advancement and development offices and work with them so that retirees are coded in their database as retirees so that in the future we will be able to get actual data for how much retirees have contributed to the university because we know it is a significant amount. Um, but unless you have the data, that's all anecdotal. And so having the actual data can really help. It's a big number and it's a good number for you to be able to advocate for retirees. And then the last section of the survey we called Life Beyond Service. This was really um, where we wanted to find out what retirees were doing for themselves, right? How they were enjoying this time in their lives. And uh, what we found is that a large percentage were involved in uh, creative pursuits. The number one recreational activity that were mentioned in the comments was travel. Lifelong learning was very important for many of our retirees. Fitness, very important. Health was very important among our retirees. And caregiving, we were surprised at the number of retirees that are providing caregiving services. Some of them, it was by choice for grandchildren or other family members, but for most, it was an unexpected and difficult task that they were providing care for parents. Many of our retirees still have living parents or other elderly relatives. Many are caring for spouses or partners. Some are caring for disabled children and other relatives. 40% providing care. And so as a result of this section of the survey, I think many of our retiree associations have been able to really um, hone in on some of the things they can do to meet the needs of their association members. UCLA, for example, has developed a travel group and it's been incredibly popular. They had 70 people show up at their first meeting. They've now gone on three or four trips with at least 20, 25, 30 people on each of the trips that they've traveled on together. They have uh, meetings where they do slide presentations of trips that their members have been on. And it's been an incredible community building activity for their association. It's also been a way to bring younger retirees into their association, which we hear from many of our associations is a big um, challenge. In terms of fitness, uh, UC Davis, for example, has developed a Fit for Life program in partnership with their uh, 
recreation department. The recreation department actually developed the program, runs the program, hires the instructors. The retiree center and the retiree associations don't do anything really except publicize the program. But it's been an incredible partnership and another way to build community because this exercise class not only has 80 people in it, but it's more than just an exercise class because the class stays after to uh, have coffee. They've actually started their own travel group and have been traveling um, small groups of them going out together. There's groups that have sectioned off a hiking group and a biking group and a kayaking group. So it's an incredible opportunity again to build community and to partner with a campus department so that the retiree association doesn't actually have to run the program. In terms of caregiving, several of the campuses have really ramped up their services that they provide to their retirees. For example, uh, UCLA started a caregiver support group. Um, UC Davis partnered with their work life department to allow retirees to participate in uh, some caregiving support groups and some caregiving resources that they offer. So there's a variety of ways that the campuses are reaching out to retirees now that they know a little bit more about uh, the things that are important to them and the services that they would like to see. So let's turn now to the project scope and process. Um, the first thing that Kukra did was to form a committee. And the committee consisted of uh, eight people. There were two full-time retiree center directors, myself and uh, Carrie Sweeney from UC Berkeley Retirement Center, and then six retirees from different UC campuses. Because we were located all over the state, we met by conference call and worked remotely. The first thing we did, as I mentioned, was to find our goals. And I will just continue to stress that it's important to set your goals for a project like this because with the questionnaire, it's important to know what questions to ask based on your goals to have your end product in mind. And it's important to know what questions to ask, but it's almost as important to know what questions not to ask because you want a survey to give you the information you need, but you don't want it to be so long that people get turned off and don't finish it. And same with the report. You want the report to meet your goals and to be appealing, but you don't want it to be so long that people stop reading it. So define those goals and really keep revisiting those goals as you go. Next, we designed the survey questionnaire. We used SurveyMonkey. Um, you will want to get a paid version of SurveyMonkey because the free version is not robust enough for a survey like this. Uh, but you can just buy it for you know, the number of months of the survey project and then you don't have to keep it if you don't use it for other things. You could go back to the free version if you only use it occasionally after that. And there are other um, software providers as well that will allow you to do questionnaires like this, but SurveyMonkey is pretty easy and user-friendly. Then a very important part of the process was testing the questionnaire. Before we sent it out to our 16,000 retirees, we sent it out to two different of our retiree organization boards. We wanted to send it to people who had not been seen the questionnaire, who had not been involved with developing the questionnaire and didn't know anything about it who could take the survey just like other retirees would take it and give us feedback. And it was vital that we did that because several questions that we thought would be interpreted one way were interpreted a different way and people had some questions or issues that we never thought would come up. And some of the questions we then revised um, based on the feedback that we got from the board. So it's very important to do that. We then worked with all of the UC campuses because this was a system-wide project and we did not have the emails for the retirees, remember. We had to go out to each campus retiree center and retiree organization and work with them to send announcements and reminders. So we provided templates and we provided timelines, but we had to rely on them to send them out. So there was a lot of coordination involved. And I would say in terms of my recommendation, and I've been involved not just with this survey, with several others as well, you send the initial announcement, a week later you send a reminder, and a week later you send a second reminder, and the week after that you close the survey. It really should be relatively short and sweet. And what we found, what I found with many surveys, and most of you will probably find as well, 
you will get about half of the survey results that you're ever going to get after that first announcement and you'll probably get them within the first two or three days. Then it will trickle off quite a bit. You'll send your reminder a week later, you'll get a little blip, then it's going to trickle off again. You send your last reminder, you're going to get a smaller blip and then it's going to really go away to be almost nothing. Close the survey at that point because any returns you get after that are going to be very minor. Then we went to analyzing the results and compiling the comments. And this was a huge project, partially because obviously the scale of this survey. We had 4,500 or so responses. We had almost every question had an open-ended comment um, opportunity. So we had thousands of comments to go through. And while the data was important, the comments were just as important because that's what brought our report to life, we felt. Um, that's what made it personal. That's what made it real. So it was very important to go through all of those comments, to find commonalities, and to find some really compelling statements that we could include in the survey report. That took quite a bit of time. And then the next step, of course, was writing the report. Now, I have to tell you, it's almost embarrassing to say this, but the committee was so focused on the questionnaire and getting it out and getting the responses and doing the analysis, we didn't really think about the step of writing the report. And we didn't have anybody on our committee who was a writer. Um, and so we struggled a bit with this step. So I ended up writing the first draft and then the committee was wonderful with helping to make revisions. And I think we ended up with a very um, compelling report but it would have been so much easier had we had a professional writer on our committee. So one of my recommendations is that you find a retiree whose career uh, at the university was doing publications or writing in some format and have them be responsible for writing the first draft of the report. The next step was the same thing, coordinating the design and printing. So really it was partway through this project that we decided that um, we thought that it should be professionally designed and printed. Again, we just hadn't thought through that much of the project. And so I ended up being the publications coordinator and finding a designer and working with the designer and getting the printing done. But I had never done that before. So um, there was a huge learning curve and it was very challenging. So again, if you can find someone who was a professional publications coordinator to be on the committee, that step will be so much easier. Then we created a press kit because we were working with 10 campuses and three labs. We knew that it would be uh, challenging for some of the campuses to disseminate the report and get it out as well as we hoped it would be. So we created templates, um, which I'll talk about in just a minute, and provided press kits to all of the campuses. Then we worked with each of the campuses to publicize and disseminate the report. Again, that had to be decentralized. We did not do much of the dissemination, but we really worked with each of the UC locations to get the report out. And then we continued to follow up and we still do that because the decision has been made to repeat this project every four years, which means this survey report will have to last for four years. So whenever a campus gets a new chancellor or a new provost or a new high level administrator, we work with the associations to bring the report to their attention. So the press kit I mentioned, um, we did a document that was called Maximizing the Report, where we provided many different ideas for publicity. I'm gonna talk about some of those in the next slide so that our retiree associations wouldn't have to reinvent the wheel. You know, they all would be working on the same ideas for publicity. I mentioned we provided templates for press releases, uh, letters and emails that would go out to introduce the report, et cetera. We also provided uh, JPEGs of the graphics from the report, both the cover and the inside charts and graphics that people could use to send as um, uh, accompaniments with the report or with announcements or they could use to post on their websites to bring attention to the report. And we provided PowerPoint slides, uh, many of which are similar to this webinar, so that if an association, for example, wanted to do a presentation to a council of deans or something like that, they would have slides to get them started. 
In terms of internal dissemination and publicity, the report was shared with the UC president and her key staff. So as I mentioned, UC has 10 campuses plus three national laboratories. We have a president that oversees all those UC locations. And our uh, chair and vice chair of our retiree system-wide group and our system-wide emeriti group were able to get on her calendar, which is not easy to do, and to present both this report and the emeriti report and really, uh, really garnered her attention um, to realize how important retirees are to the UC system as a whole. It was a very successful outcome in terms of being able to meet with her. And then on each of the campuses, we encouraged all of the associations to either meet with in person if they could, or to send the report to their chancellor, their provost, their deans and department chairs, and any other important administrators that might want to partner with them. So for example, maybe your director of HR, your director of alumni, your foundation director, your um, advancement and development director, lifelong learning, gerontology department. I mean, there's, it depends on your campus who would be the important administrators, but um, we had each campus identify on for them who that would be. We also sent it to the UC Regents and we sent it to UC affiliated boards such as the alumni boards, um, the foundations, on some of the campuses, there are service groups like um, UCLA, there's the UCLA uh, Faculty Women's Club. At Davis, there's the University Farm Circle. So each campus has their service groups um, that the retiree associations partner with or could partner with, and the report was sent to them. I mentioned retirees themselves. And the report was usually published via association and center websites and often by campus-wide publications. So we got the report from many of the campuses into the staff and faculty-wide e-newsletters um, and other types of publications that went out to different campus constituencies. And the report has been used to create talking points for advance. So for example, uh, at many of the UC campuses, the chancellor sponsors a new retiree reception and or a luncheon for a Maritai. And they're often asked for talking points. You know, the chancellor's gonna come speak at your event, but we would like talking points of what you would like them to say. And so the report has been very useful in providing those kinds of talking points for those key events. In terms of external publicity, um, many of the campuses reached out to their campus news service and they got assistance um, for writing stories, which was really nice because then they had some professional writers who could do kind of a new twist on the survey and they reached out to retirees to kind of enhance the information that was in the survey report. Many of them sent press releases to their local media, some of whom picked it up and some of whom didn't, um, but everybody tried to do that. Several campuses were able to publish stories in their alumni magazines. They published information on their social media. And of course, we shared it with the Arohi members and this project was the winner of the, one of the 2016 Innovation Awards, which we were very pleased with. Some unique approaches that campus used. Several of the campuses put the retiree and the emeriti reports together and sent them out together. The Emeriti report had been completed um, shortly before this report, and so some of the campuses shared those two reports together. Some of the campuses recreated one-page infographics and summaries, so instead of sending someone the entire report, they would send them just a one-sheet summary or a one-sheet summary and the report, um, which helped if people didn't want to read the whole report. UC Irvine fed op-ed articles to their local media. They also used it to advocate for free parking for retirees and to uh, obtain funding for an additional staff person for their retirement center. UC Santa Barbara used it as a conversation starter at their holiday luncheon. They put a copies, printed copies of the report on each table and then they encouraged retirees to talk about the report and what that meant to them. And they also use it in outreach to new retirees so that new retirees will see that they're joining a vibrant and engaged group. 
UCLA had the most detailed approach. They created a written action plan with their association board and each board member had a responsibility to get the report out in different ways. They also invited key administrators to their board meetings. Now, they didn't stay for the whole board meeting, but they would stay for the first 20 to 30 minutes. And what the UCLA uh, retiree board did is they sent the report to the administrators before the meeting, asked them to the review the report. And then when they came to the meeting, they just reviewed some of the key highlights in case they didn't really get a chance to review the report. And then they talked to that administrator about their association and how retirees are contributing and then asked were there ways that retirees could help with this administrator's job responsibilities. And these meetings have been so key to uh, increasing the awareness that you see administrators have for the association and what the association does and engaging the association board and having them be more aware of the needs and interests of the university. And it's been key in creating some really wonderful partnerships with departments on campuses, primarily with academic affairs, alumni, staff development, lifelong learning programs, human resources, um, a variety of really interesting programs have come out as a result of these meetings. So the outcomes, um, and this is just kind of a summary, the report is being used to start conversations with retirees, with campus administrators, with other campus constituencies, and with the community as a whole. Because often retirees are seen as a liability and we want them to be seen as an asset. And I think this report shows very clearly the many ways that they are assets. It's used to build awareness, as I've mentioned. It's used to propose collaborations with a variety of university departments um, and bringing retirees into really into the daily fabric of university life. And it's definitely been used to advocate for retiree association and center report. So I mentioned UC Irvine was able to use the report to advocate for additional funding for their retirement center. UC Riverside, which was one of the campuses that had very little support for their retirees, uh, was able to use this report and uh, advocate for the funding of a retirement center on their campus. And they've just very recently hired their first part-time person to fund that center. So that's very exciting. And UC Santa Cruz was able to use the report to advocate um, they had one part-time person in their retirement center and that person has been made full-time now. So these kinds of reports can be very valuable to increase your support of your retirees. So suggestions and lessons learned. I've mentioned a couple of these. Start with your goals. It's very important to do that to know where you want this to end up. Set a budget and get estimates early. So this was a large scale 13 retiree associations, 16,000 people were surveyed. This was a large scale um, project. Originally, we did not plan for a budget at all because we didn't think about the fact of possibly having it professionally designed and professionally printed. As we got into the project, we realized it was a really compelling report and we thought it could be used um, much more effectively if it was put in a professional package. So luckily our system-wide group had the budget that we could do that, but our total cost was about $6,500. We printed 500 copies um, with a color cover, but black and white on the interior to keep the cost down. So approximately half of that cost was to pay for the designer to uh, design and lay out the report. And the other half was for the printing cost. Because we were dividing this out among 13 campuses, 500 copies meant each campus got a very limited number. And so they then had to decide uh, which of their administrators were their most important ones would get the printed copies. And then everybody else would get uh, links to the electronic copy. We realized that most associations aren't going to have uh, this kind of budget to do this kind of project and you also aren't going to be doing it on this large of a scale. So it really can be scaled to any cost that you want. Had we done this only electronically, there would have been no cost at all. 
and we just had an in-house person do the layout. Um, if we had an in-house person that could do the layout and we still wanted to do printed copies, it would have been half the cost. So it can be scaled to your budget and to what you want your outcomes to be, um, but, but do decide early on and get a budget and figure out how much um, of a budget you will have to do this project. Next, we do recruit a diverse committee. I've talked about that a little bit. You want folks who can analyze the data. You want a writer for sure. You want a designer and a publication coordinator for sure, especially if you're going to do printed copies of the report and have it professionally designed. Set a realistic timeline. This took much longer than we thought it would. We're hoping by doing this webinar, we will help others shorten that timeline, but it takes time to develop your questionnaire, although by using a template that we used, and you could look at other templates as well, as well that timeline should be shortened. Um, data analysis, writing, design, and printing all takes time. And then revisit your goals every step of the way, and I've mentioned that a few times. So did we meet our goals? We felt that we definitely did. I've talked about these, but we definitely helped UC administrators better understand retiree contributions. We definitely helped our retirement organizations advocate for retirees. We gave retirees information about their achievements and we helped our retiree organizations create and improve retiree programs. We were very pleased with the report. We felt that the outcomes were very successful and um, it was definitely worth our time and effort to do this project. So just in closing, I want to say that this survey has been very valuable in illustrating that UC retirees are very active and valuable resources, that there's considerable potential for the university to better utilize UTC retiree organizations and the centers to make greater use of retirees' time and talents. You know, see retirees are reimagining and redefining their lives to make a difference. And many do so while acting as ambassadors, advocates, and advocates and assets for the University of California. You'll see here two links. One is to uh, the materials that I've talked about today uh, at the top. The link includes this survey report. It includes the questionnaire, so you can see our original questionnaire. It also includes links to our press kit so that you can use or adapt any of those materials that you choose to use. It, I've also included the link here to the Emeriti survey at the bottom so that you can see that report as well. Now that uh, project is done on a much smaller scale. There are much fewer Emeriti than there are staff. It also is done on a much smaller budget. So they did not have a professional designer. They had it designed in-house and they just had it printed at Kinko's for a few hundred dollars. So it's a good example to show you um, a project on a smaller scale. Neither one's right or wrong. Um, it's just a different approach um, to the project. And so it gives you an idea of another way to produce a very good report, um, but just on a smaller scale. So thank you for participating. If you do have questions, um, please email Arohi at info at arohi.org and we will answer your questions. And uh, good luck to you if you conduct a survey like this on your own. <laughs>